Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another one today. Today, I just want to do an update on a video I did a few months ago about priority makeup brands. And I just want to revisit the brands that I said were in my VIP list and how I'm still feeling about those brands today. So if that sounds good to you, keep on watching this video. Let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you want to hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So how are you? I am well, I'm rolling with the punches. Let me tell you about what happened yesterday. Yesterday, I went to take August to get his shot. Did I tell y'all about this in the video yesterday? Did I? About my car? I'm about to tell y'all again. So I went to take August to get his shot for asthma and on our way across town, August and I just started to smell this, I don't know, uh, burning kind of smell. And so I'm like, mm, that's so weird. I'm like, that's not us, that's not me. And something was like, just pull over. Well, there was smoke like coming from the front engine and I had to call AAA. So my mom was nearby because uh, it's out her neck of the woods, um, the place where we needed to go. And she took August's appointment. I waited for AAA from about, I would say maybe 1030, 1045 to about two o'clock. So when I got to the dealership yesterday, they're like, we might be able to look at your car tomorrow. So tomorrow is today and I haven't heard anything, but whatever ends up being done, I'm going to get my air conditioning fixed. So I don't know how much all this is going to cost, but you know what? I was like, we just got to roll with it. So I got here yesterday around the regular time <laughs> that I would have gotten here if I worked and I uh, did most of my report cards. I'm going to finish those up tonight. And, you know, I was like, I could either laugh or cry. And I just chose to laugh because, you know, when you make plans like to have a day off, I was going to get my feet done. I just, you know, had all these <laughs> delusions of grandeur, apparently. And um, it just didn't work out that way. But, you know, we just going to keep keep going. So let me know how you're doing in the comment section or the chat, whichever you prefer. And uh, we're going to get to it. So I'm looking at my notes that I wrote in my phone about priority brands and yeah i just want to go through each one and see so i did priority and then i did a general admission so let's see how we're feeling about these brands and uh, you can let me know how you feel so let's start with my girl twasha natasha denona she is still my priority brand for eyeshadows and this is focusing mostly on eyeshadow because eyeshadow has always been the part of of makeup that I have bought the most of and so I really do want to uh, be a little more selective this year in 2024 so let's see how we're doing Tasha I, I, I still love Natasha Denona I would say out of all the palettes that I've worn this year so far I've probably worn Natasha Denona palettes the most they are so easy to grab and use and I really enjoy her eyeshadow formula a lot as far as her releases this year, she hasn't done any palettes, right? Now, she did come out with these uh, illuminators. I have those, but that wasn't like a real serious release. I have yet to film those. She did come out with the, what was it called? Hyper Glam Face Palette, which I absolutely do not like how that palette looks. And nothing else is standing out to me. Oh, she did the Cranberry uh, Blush Trio Palette, which was nice. Uh, looking back on that, I definitely could have passed, but I still do like it. But it, it's not going to be a memorable release in my book, but still a very nice release nonetheless. So far, I, I feel really good about Natasha Denona still being a priority brand. I really do love her color corrector and her concealer. So I am interested in her complexion products that she is going to launch this year, which is why I picked up two of those illuminators. I will showcase those really soon. Let's talk about Unearthly. Have I gotten any PR from Unearthly? So the 
charmed box. Is that what it was called for Valentine's Day? It was a mystery box. I did not purchase that in time. It sold out. And then there was a second pre-order that was not going to go out until around this time. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be over the moment. I'm actually glad that I didn't purchase that because I wasn't really into the eyeshadow palette. And that's the main thing. I really did like uh, the other products, I, I, but I can't remember <laughs> what they are, but I, I did like the other products. Now, the Spring Magic collection I was interested in, and I thought that I would at least be getting the palette. I did not message Amanda. I kept saying I was going to, and time just got away from me, and I know it sold out. That was a really beautiful collection, and I was really interested in it. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm still going to message her about the palette. The blush palette was also really beautiful. I don't need any other products in that collection, but I do have Fall Magic, and I am affiliated with Unearthly. So I know a lot of you use my code, and I am always so thankful for that and I definitely wanted to have some inspo looks so I will message her I'm gonna see what's happening with uh, that collection but yes I am still looking out for an earthly cosmetics not just for PR but just because I really like the brand they are very very creative and I am happy with my collection from unearthly so that's my first indie brand so I'm, I'm always going to be looking out for them. Next on the list, and these aren't in order, we had Adept Cosmetics. Always uh, am looking out for Adept. The, we had the Flying Fiddles palette, which love that palette. Spicy Neutrals. Did a whole video about Spicy Neutrals. I love the interpretation of a neutral palette for Adept Cosmetics. I have two videos on my channel using that palette and doing looks. And the shimmers in that palette are the smoother shimmers that I really enjoy from Adept. They're not the Minka shimmers, the really chunky girls. Th that's not what's in Flying Fiddles. I, I love that palette. I think it's beautiful. The Cyborg Choir palette, I did pass on that one. That just wasn't my color story, but it doesn't mean it's not a, a good palette. It just didn't really speak to me. But if you did purchase Cyborg Choir, let me know how you feel about that palette and do you uh, do you love it? I'm curious to know. Is that palette something I would possibly get on a sale? Possibly. Right now, I'm not feeling like I missed out on anything regarding Cyborg Choir. The only thing I am feeling is like I don't have all the Adept palettes. I really do have most of them. But right now, that one's still a pass for me. I know they came out with a lip gloss. I did not purchase that either, but I would say Adept is still on my priority brands list. Next, we have Nomad Cosmetics. That is another uh, brand that I am affiliated with that I get PR from. And so far, Nomad is, is doing it. We had the New Zealand Stargazing palette, which I really loved. And then we had the Ireland palette. Now, I didn't film with that palette. I got the palette uh, kind of late. It wasn't their fault. It just got stuck. And eventually, I do want to do something with that palette. And when I review the Nomad palettes, I do put a lot of work and effort into uh, learning about the shade names and all of that. I still want to do that, but um, the moment kind of passed for me because I got it so late. But it doesn't mean that I, I don't think that is a beautiful palette. I think it is. And I'm always curious to see what Nomad is going to come out with, what destination they are going to be inspired by with their next release. So I feel good about Nomad. <clears throat> Look, I did. Yeah, but you got to borrow on those. And um, if August is doing his work, I'm going to help you after, okay? Ooh, that's how he felt about that. Next up, blends. Now, Blend Bunny Cosmetics, they just changed their logo, which means something is coming really soon. And I believe it's coming in about 10 days. So I am excited. They have been very quiet in 2024, but that doesn't mean I am not looking out for them. I still am. So we will see what they are launching very soon. Fantasy Cosmetica is also another brand that's uh, been a little quiet. They did come out with one collection. I think it was the Wizard Collection. And that was a very blue heavy eyeshadow palette. 
I think that Fantasy Cosmetica is really known for their creative color stories that are very curated. I love how there are perfumes to go with the palettes, but I did pass on the latest collection because it wasn't a color story that appealed to me. However, when I saw that they were teasing something, I was interested and I was looking and I had that feeling like, ooh, what is it gonna be? I think the one thing that has changed for me in 2024 is I'm not feeling. Mom. Yes. I don't know. Can I play outside? Oh, I, I, we have to see. We're gonna eat. Me now. Yeah, but when are you gonna eat? I'll eat. Okay. Are you done though? I'm. I'm almost. Let me, just, let me know when you're done. Let me just do one more page and then I just, then I just have to write that. Okay. You said play it outside. George. I forgot what I was saying. And I said, when we get back from karate, I'm going to film this video. Like y'all have homework. I have food in the oven on the stove. doesn't matter. I know y'all love seeing them now. And I do too. But Fantasy Cosmetica. Oh, what I was saying was the one thing that I'm feeling different about now in 2024 is I'm not feeling the obligation to buy everything from a brand that is a so-called priority brand or from a brand that I love. And I feel really good about that. I don't think we need to succumb to that pressure. We don't need that. I have gone back and forth feeling that way now for going on four years. And this year, I don't know what switched in me with eyeshadow and palettes is probably having an overwhelming amount of makeup products and eyeshadow palettes and not really being able to enjoy them and let my collection just shine and and blossom you know with the looks that i can create and really see you know the looks that i can get from these palettes like i'm really wanting to do that and so far this year i've tapped into so many older palettes because I haven't been getting as many palettes and I've still been reviewing palettes and, and using new palettes. So it's not that I'm not getting new stuff, but I guess maybe just not as many palettes. And I felt great about that. So I'm still looking out for Fantasy Cosmetica. The next brand we had on the list was Cosmic Brushes, or I had on the list. Cosmic Brushes. They haven't released anything this year. They have done a restock recently but the palettes they've restocked, I believe that I, I have them. So the Wonderland palette, the Serenity palette, I know they have the uh, Gothic palette, but that's not a palette that I needed to add to my collection. I am gonna be curious when they do tease something. I'm, I'm gonna still be looking out for them, especially because they are very affordable. So I would say Cosmic Brushes is still on the list. I just haven't, uh, I haven't had anything to talk about with them because they haven't released anything. And I'm not mad about it at all. I, I love this break. I did put Lethal in the VIP uh, list and I still feel the same about Lethal. Am I annoyed about this Avatar collection that they have been teasing forever? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I don't know if that's gonna be the collection for me just like the seven up it almost is like a separate brand to me when they release things like that however they did release a new palette i can't remember what it's called but it's beautiful it is not out yet and i have not talked about it in the new makeup releases video because it literally just uh was revealed but they have a new palette coming out very very beautiful in the same style as the midnight serenade with the butterfly on the front different color story and three new mascaras and one is a, a dark periwinkle so i am looking to get that palette as well as the mascara these palettes are really affordable. I really enjoy their uh, pre-made palettes as well as the palettes that I've made on my own from their palette designer. So yes to Lethal still being in the uh, priority brands list. And those were my eight brands. I also mentioned that I wanted to get the large biradal palette only and I did. And I did confirm with some of my makeup friends that they only come out with one a year. Most likely that's going to be my only purchase from Byredo because I don't like the smaller palette formula. They, I, I really, really did not like that. I did film with Mineral Scapes. I really, really like it and I can't wait to use it more just to see like other looks that I can create with the palette. But I did do, I think I did three looks. I can't remember. 
two or three, but it was enough for me to be really happy with uh, the large palette for this year. And it was a pricey one, so I'm glad they're only doing one. And before we go to general admission, <sighs> would I add any other brands to my uh, priority? Or what do I call it? Yeah, my priority brands, <laughs> my uh, VIP list. In a way, think I should add Dior to that list. And I was kind of feeling like that last time, but the Dior thing isn't about their eyeshadows. I do like their eyeshadows. I do have two of their larger palettes that I acquired at the end of last year. But when it comes to their lipsticks, like their satin lipsticks, I just got some of those. I have some of their illuminators or what is this glow maximizers. I now have three of those. The star filter, uh, the, the matte lipsticks, I got the forever natural glow bronzer. I'm pretty much using something from Dior every day. And when they come out with something, I don't always want it, but I do always look, I am always looking and saying like, Ooh, does this Quint look like something else? But I'm never skipping past it. So I think I should move Dior up and yeah, I, I think I should move Dior into the priority brands list. <sighs> All right, so what were we talking about, Dior? Yeah, I, I wanna move Dior up. And when it comes to, oh yeah, I did take some notes. Dior, oh, these are kind of luxury brands. I wanna move up into VIP. Doesn't mean I'm buying everything, because I, I can't afford to. Chanel is another one. Um, I haven't really bought a lot of Chanel this year, but I did buy one quad. I bought a primer, I think that's it, from Chanel. But I am looking out for them. They came out with that summer collection. I didn't end up getting anything from it. Oh, I did buy a Chanel blush and I was gifted one. But I didn't get anything from that summer collection. But that was the most interesting thing that I had seen in a while. They had that highlighter that was like a duochrome and they have some new creative uh, directors. So. I'm going to have to move Chanel up. I'm always looking. I'm, I'm always looking to see what they're doing. And I also feel the same way about Lisa Eldridge. I didn't get her skin tint. I didn't get the liner or, or the mascara, but I know how I feel when she says she's going to launch something. I am waiting to see if it's going to be something I'm interested in. I'm still interested in the skin tint. It's just not something that I need at this time. So I think that that's okay to move someone up. It doesn't mean I'm getting everything, but I'm just trying to think of the feel that I have when a brand says they are releasing something. And lastly, I'm going to mention Hourglass, but I think Hourglass can be general admission. The best thing that Hourglass has come out with that's new has been their lipsticks. And I love the satin ones. I have not tried the matte ones, but I did order one. I know they have a press powder that just released, but I'm actually going to replace my ambient palette or powder palette. And I'm going to try the number two volume two. So I, I love this. I use this on a daily basis. So I don't know. I just wanted to mention hourglass because I don't think I mentioned them in the last video. Let me see. I did. I did mention them and I talked about how I mostly uh, look for them around the holidays. So let's keep them in general admission. But Chanel Dior and Lisa Eldridge, I'm moving up. That puts my priority brands at 11. All right, well, it is what it is. Now let's go ahead and look, and by Rado, I'm not moving to, to their general admission because I'm probably only getting that palette and that's it. All right, the general admission list. First, let's talk about Glam Light. I kind of want to just take glam light off. I don't know. I am looking back at my glam light purchases that I made from Black Friday. I have not touched them. And I think I was just thrilled by the prices, which weren't bad to begin with. But then I just indulged in Scooby-Doo palettes and Freddy Krueger palettes and what a three Scooby-Doo palettes. I mean, things that I know now that I'm not really going to wear. So I did sell the two small ones. I'm going to sell the big one. I don't know. I got the Chucky palette too. And uh, I don't really regret getting the Chucky one. I did get Rick and Morty. That was my very first palette purchase of 2024. And I do want to keep that. But I think I really just got 
excited about the site being 40% off versus do I really uh, want this stuff? And, and did I want it when it was regular price? The answer is no, I didn't. And I was just swayed by the price. I, I just, I just succumbed to the sale and uh, that's unfortunate. And I had to reflect on that. So I'm trying to recoup some of my money back because a, a sale is still wasting money if you don't use the items. So I'm going to take Glam Light off. I mean, it doesn't mean I'm not going to purchase anything from Glam Light, but you know, they released their Kiss collection. They had a Garfield collection and I'm just realizing you really don't go for themed makeup. You just don't. Oftentimes I rationalize purchases or I say I will, but I really, really won't. So I'm taking them off the list. Next we have Donessa. I'm still looking for Donessa, but I don't feel like anything's really appealing to me. I thought I was gonna wanna try that uh, blooming uh, groundwork palette, but I know how I feel about cream shadows and how they crease on me, so I didn't. I thought I was going to try, like she came out with a, a primer. I didn't get that. Danessa can stay in general admissions, but um, I just haven't really been, I don't know. I'm just interested. City Grace is still general admissions and I still feel good about my singles no buy. And um, I don't really miss getting the monthly bundles. I feel good about it. They're very cute. You know, I think my favorite thing <laughs> were the stickers, but I, I still feel really good about keeping Sydney Grace in general admissions. Not much has appealed to me from the brand so far this year. The palettes, or I think it's just been one palette. That palette was a wedding theme palette and it wasn't anything that I needed. It was neutral. And I have a neutral palette that I got from them last year, the Love's Journey. So I feel good about keeping Sydney Grace in the general admissions. Pat McGrath. I still feel good about keeping her in general admissions. I thought I was going to buy the new pink powder, but I didn't. Uh, she's opened up vaults. She's had sales. And I learned my lesson last time. She had a big sale. Heard it when you no. get no I, initials. I, when you write your initials, like AJC. What is crazy me? To eat. What is Haltingly to stop. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm glad that you moved on and I still will help you with the other part. I'm waiting for the text. Okay. I thought I was going to get, oh, I learned my lesson the last time she had a big sale where it was like 30 or 40% off all of those items. I mean, I did try one of the uh, Mothership Megas, the holiday ones, but I really didn't like that layout and I just let the cheap price get me. I did get two of the uh, five pans, haven't touched them. I kind of do regret that purchase because I haven't touched them and I know the quality is going to be nice, but I really didn't like the layout of those mothership megas. And I ended up getting both of them because it was part of the sale. Like I think it was a bundle that was just a waste of money. So it's just sitting. Uh, Pat McGrath is still going to be general admission. I of course will be curious about the mothership that she does this year, but Mm, it's such a change from how I was a couple years ago and the way I felt about Pat McGrath. And it's really, it's kind of sad. Notoriously morbid, general admission. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I do not feel that their shipping time has turned around, that their releases have slowed down. They are releasing things like they're revealing it and then releasing it the next day. Not sure if I'm still in the PR list or not. The person that I am usually in touch with for Notoriously Morbid no longer works there. And that might be the reason that I haven't gotten anything. They're supposed to put me in touch with someone else. I'm not sure where I stand with the brand. I know my code still works, but as far as products, the releases that have come out. I did like the Painted Town Red palette, but not enough to purchase it. I think they have something else coming out tomorrow, but I haven't seen what it looks like. So um, I'm just going to leave them where they are. Clarity, I'm going to leave in general admission. I ordered the Komodo palette because that went on sale. 
I haven't really felt motivated to use it. And towards the end of the year, it seems like they were just wiping everything out. They have released a palette this year or sneak peek some things. There was a Deadly Rose palette, but I just wasn't compelled. So I'm gonna leave Clarity where it is. And uh, lately I haven't been doing the super, super shimmy shimmers. So I don't know. Those palettes just haven't called to me as far as uh, wanting to use the ones that I have. So I'm gonna leave Clarity where it is. Now Huda Beauty. Huda Beauty, I always look forward to for the holiday for the palettes but i did purchase two color correctors i did purchase the peach pie powder and i just purchased another peach pie that doesn't have the fragrance so i i'm keeping my eye out on huda but they're gonna stay in general admission halting like to halt to stop. no like the whole thing halting lee i think it's like when you halt like when you stop i know Let's look it up. In a nervous way, stopping often while you are saying or doing something. Wait, what does like grazing mean? Grazing is like to eat. And what does... Hold on, let me Of course, it has to be done right now. What does herding mean? Herd it, like to gather, to get everything together. All right, so that's Huda. We talked about our glass. So Terra Moons, I had Terra Moons on the list for general admission if they released a palette and they did and I didn't want it. <laughs> there were two browns in it that looked really similar. The other shades were shades I, I just know I have in my Indie Singles collection. I just wasn't a huge fan of that palette. I, I think it was something I could put together myself. So I did pass on that. Did Cleona? Did Cleona ever come out with the palettes they said they were gonna come out with? They were gonna reissue some palettes. Hold on, let's check. I don't know if they did, let me know. Because they had palettes that were previous releases from years ago before I was into makeup and I thought they were bringing them back. And I was semi-interested in them, but I lost interest. All right, let me know. I'm gonna leave Cleona where it is. And uh, that's it. Now, there are, I had the hmm section. Melt was in that section. I still feel like that about Melt, except for their slick waterline pencils. Those are very good, but I have all the colors. So not gonna be purchasing uh, any more of those unless they have some new colors. I have their cream blushes. I really still like those, but as far as eyeshadow, no. The Bailey Syrian palette kind of sealed the deal for me with Melt. Odin's Eye, I did pass on the recent Legendary Diversa collection, although I was very tempted by Tina's palette and Annette's palette, but I did not. I just can't bring myself to order from them. And then I wrote all those indie brands. So Bella Butte Bar, I haven't really been tempted. Inslee Rain, I was tempted by the Groovy Gardens palette, but I did not. Uh, Sugar Drizzle and Simply Posh, no, and the prices to me are still a bit high. All right, you guys, so that's where I stand on my priority brands list. And I just thought it would be nice to come on here and reflect about my thoughts a few months ago and how I'm feeling now. I think for the most part, I'm still feeling the same about the brands. And I think some brands haven't really uh, peaked yet as far as what, well, I don't think any brands have peaked yet in what they're gonna be releasing this year, but some brands haven't really released anything. But I know these brands are gonna come out with things and when they do, they're gonna really come at us with some stuff. So yeah, that's where I am. Let me know how you're feeling and like, do you have priority brands list? I know a lot of you do because we talked about it uh, back then, but I wanna know how you're feeling about the brands now. And that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another one today. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you're being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Go on, blah.